Hey, welcome back. Today is March 30th, Tuesday, and on this post, I'll be telling you about the overall crypto markets, which includes Bitcoin dominance and Bitcoin price action, and see how they could potentially affect the overall altcoin markets. Before diving into Scale Network, SKLUSD, and see what exactly has gone on in here, I'll be telling you about the bullish and bearish case scenarios for today, as well as the short-term price prediction on this market, according to what I'm seeing on the charts. Before we begin today, if you guys are enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video as I'll be keeping you updated on the latest crypto setups on my watch list, regardless if it's a good day or a bad day. If you want to support me and don't already have a Weibo brokerage account, you guys can use my referral link down below. They're still giving away two free stocks as of today upon a successful sign up and a qualifying deposit of $100. US And I will also receive a referral bonus if you guys sign up under me. Please also read my full disclaimer below. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I'm purely sharing my own speculation and opinions on this market. I cannot tell you the future and you should always do your own due diligence before trading or investing in this market as it's extremely risky and volatile. If you have any questions or comments, please do only leave them in the comment section below. But I try my best to get to as many of them as possible. Now see what exactly is going on in this market. First, most importantly, I do take a look into Bitcoin dominance. Tells me what the money could be trading into. Would it be Bitcoin, altcoins, or neither? Today, we have Bitcoin dominance up very slightly today, less than 0.1%. This breaks down to a Bitcoin price action up over 2%. Total altcoin market cap up almost 2%, trailing behind Bitcoin. Now, this is the upside of Bitcoin dominance trending upwards. I will usually see Bitcoin price action leading in gains ahead of total altcoin market cap. I usually emphasize Bitcoin dominance trend downwards. That's generally speaking better for the altcoins. Because conversely speaking, if Bitcoin dominance was trending downwards, the upside of that, I will usually see total altcoin market cap leading in gains ahead of Bitcoin. Let's go over to Bitcoin dominance here on the three day time frame has been my focus. We are making a new low right now. And as I've been saying, that is more ideal for the altcoins, generally speaking, on both the upside and downside. Okay. However, still possible bullish divergence could happen here on the weekly time frame. So this is another time frame I'm paying attention to as well. On the monthly time frame here, we have about one more day left on this, until this monthly candle closes. If this closes below the support right now, the monthly 50 MA, which is the white line, that's more ideal for the altcoins as well. That's a further confirmation that this could be going, uh, it will, will, will be continuing downwards. Let's go over to Bitcoin. Since yesterday, we have broken above the key resistance then, which is the daily 21 MA. I did say that this was, uh, this could be a falling watch pattern break out. If it actually breaks out to the fullest here, the measure target is about, is above 65K here. Now, measure targets are theoretical approximate targets only, may actually be different in real life price action, more or less. Possible scenario here is that if the price action does not actually reach its measure targets, this could also turn into a inverse head and shoulders pattern or a selling triangle type of pattern, including cup and handle here. Okay, where well, we do already have the left side of the inverse head and shoulders pattern or a ascending triangle pattern as well. So that's another possibility. Now, this key resistance is now key support, the daily 21 MA. However, still some bearish signals on the higher time frames not to ignore, including weekly bearish divergence scenario until it's actually negated or played out here. So what I would actually look for to see if this bearish divergence on the weekly time frame is completely played out is I'll look for a higher RSI reading here. So if it was to make a higher high on the weekly time frame here, I am looking for a higher RSI reading than about six, uh, 76 here to negate bearish divergence and to confirm that this bearish divergence on the weekly time frame is done playing out. On the monthly time frame, however, we have been having bearish divergence for quite some time, still has yet to play out or yield a red candle, not something I'll lose track of. Because if Bitcoin pulls back at any point, it could still have an effect on the altcoins. The multiplier of that bearish effect on the altcoins will usually depend on how far up or down 
Bitcoin dominance is trending. Let's go over to Scale Network. <clears throat> I'm going to take a look from the monthly time frame down to the daily, which I consider to be macro time frames, and see if we have any overbought RSI readings or possible bearish divergence scenarios. On the monthly time frame here, we don't have a reading. Let's move on. Weekly time frame here, we're at about over 77 here, so in slight overbought territory. And a possible bearish divergence scenario here, if the price actually wants to make a higher high here on the weekly time frame, it does need to beat the last RSI reading here of over 86 to negate bearish divergence. Three-day time frame here. We are currently at about 70 here, so in just uh, barely entering overbought territory again. However, if the price action wants to make a new high here, it does need to beat the last RSI reading of over 86 to negate bearish divergence. On the daily time frame here, we're about 65, and very similar thing could be said about possible bearish divergence as well. That's what I said on the three-day and the weekly. Let's take a look into what has gone on since my last post. Since my last post, I did say there was a falling wedge pattern. Measure target is about a dollar, slightly over a dollar. Price action did break out of that pattern on the daily time frame. Went as far as about a dollar and eight cents. So it has reached its measure target and some more. Now, what do I think it could be going on here after this breakout? I do see resistance at about the $1.10 level there, even though this last um, breakout here was a little bit shy of that, okay? But I would connect three candles to form resistance, to indicate resistance from past trading history here at about $1.10 level, even though the past breakout was less than $1.10. I think that still makes sense. So let's discard this falling watch pattern. And then what I'm estimating is something more like this. So I'm estimating a sitting triangle pattern because I do have a resistance uh, at about $1.10 level, which I can connect three candles of right now. Um, I do think the bottom trend line here, I will be looking for... Um, some direction from the daily 50 MA because the daily 21 MA has already been uh, support once. So possible that the daily 50 MA could actually become more parallel with this bottom trend line. So that's the reason I'm at actually estimating this uh, direction for the bottom trend line here. Okay, so this very early estimate, it is not a validated A setting triangle pattern. I'm still looking for that second set of swing down to actually validate this possible ascending triangle pattern. So it is not completed, it is not validated, it's still my early estimate here. Now, if this ascending triangle pattern is validated, then according to Thomas Bukowski and his website, thepatternsite.com, it has a 63% chance of it breaking to the upside. And if it actually does break to the upside after it's validated, then I do have a measure target here. A conservative measure target because I'm actually excluding some of these wicks above my top estimated trend line right now. So as far as I can read it here is about a dollar and forty two cents. Let's take a more exact measurement. The top here will be about a dollar and ten cents just to be even. So 50 cents right here, and then that's a difference of about 60 cents. Adding it back on top of $1.10 would be about $1.70 measure targets. Now, measure targets are theoretical approximate targets only. may actually be different in real-life price action, more or less. Let's take a look into some of the key supports and resistances relevant to this price action right now. Immediate resistance would be about the $1.10 fit level. Uh, excuse me, $1.10 psychological resistance here as we have seen two weeks very close to this price range that has gone rejected next one would be a slightly below a dollar and 30 cents would be the next resistance from this one wick from past trading history there key support immediately would be about 70 cents fit level area 
which is pretty in line with the daily 21 MA right now. If that does not hold, it does seem like I have to take a look into the next uh, FIB level area as some of the other major moving averages have not caught up. It will be about the 60 cents FIB level area. Okay. Let's take a look into the bullish and bearish case scenarios. Bullish case scenario, while there are other bullish case scenarios I have not accounted for, I do think this is the more probable one based on the reasonings I have just provided uh, with the top trend lines and the bottom trend line here. Okay. So bullish case scenario, in my uh, opinion here, would be for the price action to finish validating this ascending triangle pattern, break out of it, and go towards its measure targets, mining some of the resistance that I have just pointed out. Bearish case scenario, price action breaks its bottom trend line. Depending on the timing, it actually breaks its bottom trend line, of course. And I am actually looking for the daily 50 MA to catch up more to the bottom trend line here. If it actually does break the bottom trend line here, uh, right now, that is, that would invalidate this ascending triangle pattern because it would, that would tell me it's going to drop to the next fit level area. But if it actually breaks the bottom trend line later, it could be possible that um, the daily 50 MA is caught up to the bottom trend line here. So I just really have to reevaluate the bottom trend line once it breaks it and see if it actually holds uh, a symmetrical a ascending triangle pattern shape. Or would I actually have to just uh, look at the next key level support and seeing if that holds and another pattern could um, be looked at at that time. Now these are my bullish and bearish case scenarios for today. Let me know if you found it helpful. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Let me know your agreements, disagreements, feedback. I love to hear them. Hope you manage your risk carefully. And if you would like to see any more of my most recently uploaded videos on YouTube, you guys can check out my links up here on YouTube. See you next time.